Now come to the exercise on page 178 of this lesson. We will discuss the question answers one by one. Question number one is fill in the blanks. In dash mode of reproduction, the offsprings are with minor difference. Now there is not much difference from the parents to the offspring. So obviously which type of reproduction it is? It is asexual reproduction. Second one, both the parents contribute equal amount of dash material to the offspring. When two parents are involved, they pass on to the genetic material. So the answer to the blank is genetic material. Third, dominant character masks the dash character. Obviously, when dominant character is seen, the recessive character is masked. Masked means hidden. So the answer to the blank is Ma recessive character R E C E S S I V E. Fourth one, selection by nature is not dash but dash. Selection of nature nature is not deliberate but by nature. So first blank is deliberate, second blank is nature or natural. Question number two, give scientific reasons. First. In sexual mode of reproduction, greater diversities are produced. Diversities means changes, variations. So what happens in sexual reproduction? Male gamete and female gamete are fusing together. So they are two parents are involved. First, two parents are involved. Secondly, they, both the parents have its own DNA. So that means they have their different genetic factors. Third, the more diversity is seen because more variations are present. When crossing over takes place, the DNA from male and the DNA from female cross over. And obviously there are going to be recombinations. And because of these recombinations, diversity of variations are seen. Second one, phenotypic and genotypic ratios are different. Obviously, when we studied about the monohybrid cross and the dihybrid cross, we saw in the monohybrid cross, in the F1 generation, all were red flowers. Though the genetic material passed on to them was dominant also and recessive also. By rule, whichever is dominant will be seen. So phenotypically, what we can see are less in number, but the hybrid crossing is always more in number because the recessive characters are not seen. They are present in the genes. Third one. In human beings, the gametes from the male parent decides the sex of the baby. As I had explained, the female carries two types of chromosomes, XX, that means XX chromosomes female carries and two chromosomes which the male carries is X and Y. X is longer than Y. Now, in case of fusion, invariably from mother X is going to be passed on. But this X has to fuse with one of the chromosomes from the male that means either X or either Y. If female chromosome fuses with X chromosome of male, it produces a girl child. But if female X fuses with the Y chromosome of the male, it produces a male child. So it shows that male is responsible for the determination of sex in the human beings. Fourth one, paleontological evidence suggests that invertebrates came into existence before the vertebrates. When we were doing the fossils uh, part, I had explained that when the fossils were dug out, that means when the digging was taking place, the um, scientists tried to understand what are the evidences which can prove that our ancestors were so and so, they found that the lowermost the, when they go bent on digging, they saw the lowermost were the uh, invertebrates and above them were the amphibians, the frog, the fishes. So that proves that uh, if, um, this fossilization proved that maybe when the life was formed, first the invertebrates were formed and then the various other types of organs, organisms were formed. Question number three, with the help of a diagram that is Pionet square, Show a Mendelian experiment where tall pea plant bearing red flowers is crossed with short pea plant bearing white flowers. We were discussing the exercise given on page 178. 
of this lesson mapping our genes we were on question number 3 what was question number 3 with the help of a diagram punit square show a mendelian experiment where tall pea plant bearing red flowers is crossed with a short pea plant with white flowers write both the phenotypic and genotypic ratio for f2 generation now they have asked us only the f2 generation to be shown on a punit square if you remember we had done this with uh, round and yellow seeds here we are going to take two different types of pea plants one parent pea plant will have tall plant and red flowers that means that plant is tall having a red flowers and these two are the dominant characters and the other pea plant is a short pea plant with white flowers and these are the recessive characters so when we want to show the dominant characters we will use the capital letters so here for tall plant we have used capital TT and for small red flowers uh, sorry the red flowers which are dominant we have taken capital RR and same way for short plant now here we took tall T tall for tall plant we have taken capital T for short plant we will take small T here we took red flowers which is dominant which will be showing with the capital R here white flowers will show with the small R now from the combination we get four types of gametes which are female gamete and male gamete so four types of gametes will be as combinations of these two capital T R capital R capital T small r small t capital R small t small r so these are the four combinations of gametes which are uh, coming from male and female that means each gamete will have two type of characteristic features and these characteristic features are going to cross over so this is a punit square which I have made and here this symbol shows for men and this uh, shows for female male and female now I will just write down the number of squares so that again you can recollect what we did this is 1, 2, 3 and 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 so 16 squares will be formed 4 for male, 4 for female that is the gametes coming from the male combinations so 4 into 4 is 16 so 16 squares are possible this is how you have to make a table this is called as punit square and one more name is checkerboard square so now how to show the combinations we have to start how the crossing will take place this gametes and this gametes will cross over so what will be formed you can see T T T R T R so what will be formed capital T's and two small uh, capital R's so what how we will write it you have seen in the case of red and yellow flowers so we will show you T now we will write tallness together and red flowers together so T and T R and R this is the first case now this TR and this TR so capital T capital T both ways and capital R smaller this is the combination of these two now this and this always start with capital if it is there T then small T then big R and big R then TR here T capital here T small here R capital and R small this is how the first four squares get filled up now come to the second one in the female and say here all the males so tr and tr so capital t capital t big r and small r you have to write remember always write the capital first and the small one then this t this t here both the r are small so both the r will come small here capital t small t now here capital R and this is small r. Now here this capital T, this small t, both r's are small, so I will write both r's small. Here 
small t and here capital T. So first I will write capital T, then small r, small t, both capital R. Now this and this capital T, small t, capital R, small r. Then here both t's are small. So we will write both the t small and both r's are big. So we will write both r's big. This is the 11 square. 12 square, t both are small, one r is big and one r is small. Now the last one, capital T here, small t, capital R, small r. Now here, capital T, this is small t, both r's are small. Here both t's are small, so both t's small, here capital R and one small r. And here both t small, both r small. So this is the result of if we take a pea plant which is tall and having red flowers, and other one is short plant which is having white flowers. So t t r r is the dominant characters here, small t t and small r r is the recessive characters here. And this is the punit square which is formed. This is called as punit square or checkerboard square. Now, second question which is asked is what is the phenotype of this checkerboard? So phenotype is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So phenotype we saw it is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. The 9 of same, same kind, 3 of same kind, another 3 of same kind and 1 is totally different. So this is the result of F2 generation. What is the result of F2 generation in genotype? It is 1 is to 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1. This is the ratio which is found in, found we find in genotype. What is the difference? Phenotype is the characteristic feature which we can see physically and genotype where the hybrid combination of gametes have taken place. So one, one type, one type, two different types, two different types, so different, there are different different types of um, hy hybrid uh, gametes which are formed which can be homozygous or heterozygous. What is homozygous? Homozygous means of the same kind, means dominant dominant or recessive recessive. And then heterozygous means one may be dominant, one may be recessive. So this is the type, it can have homozygous or heterozygous. This is the answer, complete answer for question number 3. Now we move on to question number 4. Write a short note on Darwin's theory of evolution. Now we had done what is evolution? The slow and gradual changes or the characteristic features bodily or uh, the features which are inside the body which show a change over the years, over the generation to generation that is called as evolution. So what was Darwin's theory? Darwin said that only the fittest can survive on this in any environment and this fittest depends on how many type of variations are seen, whether the variations are suitable for that particular organism or not. So these variations help the organism in a generation or la generation later also to adjust to the surrounding. But basically what he wanted to say is the only the fittest will survive in this environment. And this production of environment and uh, in production of individuals takes place through sexual reproduction where the two different type of gametes are coming and they are passing on the uh, hereditary characters which may show some variations in the form of recombinations and that recombination helped them to survive better in the world. So as the generations moved on various types of variations were found and various types of variations um, were helpful in making them survive on this earth. But he could not explain one thing how the her characters, hereditary characters are transferred from the parents but uh, how are they transferred from one generation to another generation. That he could not uh, explain much better, but his theory of evolution was accepted worldwide. Now we will go through some extra questions.
from this lesson only which will just highlight the various points and revise your theory part the first question is what is meant by inheritance what is the relationship between inheritance and variations now what is inheritance inheritance is a mechanism by which the characters are passed on from your uh, parents to the offspring so it's called a mechanism through which the characteristic features or the traits are passed on from parents to offspring what is the relation between inheritance and variations now when we talk about inheritance inheritance and variations variations are seen very less when we consider asexual reproduction because in asexual reproduction there is only one parent involved so if there is only one parent involved the uh, next generation will be almost the same as the parent so variations are very minute but in case of sexual reproduction two different types of gametes are involved where the crossing over between the genes takes place and therefore the recombination between the gametes takes place and they produce various types of variations and these variations are passed on from generations to generation then next question related to it define heredity now what is heredity again transmission of traits or characteristics whether physical or mental this is called as heredity now from transmission of traits physical or mental from parents to offspring is called heredity inheritance was the mechanism through which is taking place but what is heredity the transmission of characteristics or traits whether physical which we can see or mental which we cannot see but we can observe and that is called as uh, heredity now for example how we can say that look wise if i am looking like my father or my mother that means the physical part i have taken from him but many times it so happens the intelligence the behavior the attitude that also you take from your parents and that also is considered as mental inheritance so this is the difference how do genes regulate the height of a plant now you know any characteristic feature which uh, the genes has to highlight or genes regulate it has to grow through hormones now if the hormones are regulated properly or released properly then the proper characteristic is seen or proper growth is taking so if this hormone is uh, regulated properly that means the enzyme working on it should be uh, regulate or should be working very efficiently so i will say efficient enzyme releases the hormone in sufficient amount and when the hormone is released in sufficient amount the characteristic feature can be easily seen because the growth has taken place in that direction but if the uh, enzyme is insufficient it will not produce the hormone in a required amount and it may really it may turn out to be a very stunted growth so the enzymes sufficient uh, efficient enzyme is responsible for sufficient amount of hormones to release and this is how the tallness is characterized explain the terms homozygous and heterozygous using the example in example white colored flowers or red colored flowers now homozygous individual is the one in which a pair of genes are same when i say it is dominant i will use the word for red flower r capital r capital so when i am showing both the r's capital when i am showing both the r's capital i am talking about homozygous that means these pair of genes are same that means both are dominant after crossing over if i get such type of combination of genes that means this is called as heterozygous so homozygous when the pair of genes are same heterozygous when the pair of genes are different one may be dominant one may be recessive which were the seven pairs of contrasting traits in pea plant that were studied by mendel we also saw various type of traits which we took in the example of punnett square also so i had written that time all the seven characteristic features which he considered we can revise over it first he took the stem height whether tall or dwarf this was first one 
Second one, he took the color of the flower, whether it was white colored flower or red colored flower. Then he took seed shape, round shape, round shape or wrinkle shape. Then he took flower position, that means the very, whether it is axial position or whether it is terminal position. Then he took pod color, that means the color of the seed, whether it was green colored seed or yellow colored seed. Then he took whether the pod shape, whether it was constricted shape or full shape. Then seed color, gray seed or white seed. So these were the different contrasting characters which he took for his experimentation purpose. Next question, what are F1 and F2 generations? Why are genotypic and phenotypic ratios different in these generations? Now F1 generation is called first filial generation which is obtained from the crossing over of two parents. Right. And this is called as parental generation. That means when I take two parents, I call it as a parental generation. When the two pa pair of genes are crossing over, they give rise to a new set of plants with the different characters and that is called as F1 or filial 1 generation. F2 generation is the second filial generation. We take the consideration that the plants which are formed in the F1 generation, they are crossed. Self-pollination again is taking place in them and then the second generation is coming. Phenotypically, the, when the recombination takes place, obviously new types of gametes are going to be formed. And therefore, the phenotypically, we may find it is different. In F1 generation, phenotypically, it is in F1 generation, phenotypically, it is 3 is to 1. And genotypically, it is 1 is to 2 is to 1. This is an F1 generation. In F2 generation, phenotypically, we get 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. And genotypically, we get 1 is to 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1. How to remember this? Very easy. 1 and 1, 2 and 2. In between only 4. Then in reverse order. 2 and 2, 1 and 1. So just learn it. The ratio remains same. What are the dominant and recessive traits in human beings? This came for 3 marks question in October 2013 examination. Now dominant traits seen in human beings are curved little finger. This finger is curved. This is very dominant. Everyone's is not straight. Then presence of hair on the digits of the hand. Now these are the digits. So many times the hairs are present. That is dominantly seen in males. Then dark hair. We have generally you must have seen the Indian community. They have dark black hair. Then freckles on the face. We, no one's face is as smooth we can see. In the Indian society we are seeing lot of you know disturbances in the smoothness and that is called freckles. Then dimples on the cheek, that is also a dominant character seen in many. Free air, ear lobes. Free ear lobes means that this ear part is free. It is not attached like this. So this is a dominant character. Cap capacity to roll the tongue. I can roll the tongue like this. Anyone can't do. So if it is many of them, many of them can do, then it becomes a dominant character. So most of us can do very easily. Capacity to fold the tongue. I am folding the tongue. It is easy. I, I think it is easy because it's a dominant character for me. But many may not find it easy, then it becomes a recessive character for them. The next question which we can take is, what is sex chromosome? There are list of questions, I will do one by one. What is sex chromosome? Now as you know, the human beings contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23 pairs of chromosomes means 46 chromosomes. Now the 46 chromosomes are not sex chromosomes. Only one pair is called sex chromosome. So for 23 pairs of chromosomes are there. Out of that 22 are called autosomes. And one pair is called as sex chromosomes. So in short, I can say that 44 plus XX 
that means this is the set of chromosomes found in female okay this is a sex of chromo sex chromosome found in female it becomes 46 44 are autosomes x and x that means a pair of chromosomes which the female carry is called as xx chromosomes total 46 then 44 plus xy this is carried by male and it becomes 46 so this is called as sex chromosomes and normal autosomes are 44 that means 22 pairs so this this is this is called as sex chromosome how many pairs of chromosomes are there in human beings i have told you there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in human beings how is the sex of human offspring determined now female contains xx type of chromosome male contains xy type of chromosomes so we can see with the help of suppose father a father is carrying x y okay so this x and this is y different gamete mother is carrying x x type of chromosome so this two types of chromosomes can be separated like this so if this is combining and this is combining it gives rise to x x which is a girl child this x again will combine with this type of x if the such type of combination is taking place this is a girl child now this y and this x gives rise to x y this is a male child or boy and this y and this x gives rise to male child or a boy this is how we can determine the sex if we know which type of chromosomes are carried by male. Male carries X and Y type of chromosomes. Female carries X and X types of chromosomes. This is the sex determination uh, flow chart which can be shown in the, um, this way. Next question, what are vestigial organs? Give some examples of such organs. Yeah, this type of question came for three marks in October 2013. Another way in which it can be asked is what are vestigial organs? Give two examples in plants and human beings. So this is this type of question also came in March 2015. Actually, what are vestigial organs? Vestigial organs are the non-functional body parts or the non-functional organs present in the human beings or you can say present in the organism. If you talk of human beings, we, I had told you that there is an appendix part which is present in the abdomen area which is of no use. This, abdomen, uh, this abdominal uh, organ which is called as appendix, it was present earlier because the human beings also were eating raw food, raw animals, raw vegetables without cooking. And that time it was very necessary to, uh, to digest the cellulose if they are eating the plants and it was very necessary to di digest the meat part without cooking so the appendix was doing that work but since the fire came into existence we invented fire after that the cooking started and it became easier for us to digest the food and therefore slowly and slowly this part did not go away but it remained as a vestigial organ another vestigial organ which we have is a tailbone now here if you feel at the end of your uh, vertebral column there is a bone which is made up of four small bones and that is called as tail bone which was present in our ancestors because they were having tail as in the case of monkeys nowadays but slowly slowly this tail vanished but the tail bone remained at present we do not have any use of this tail bone if you consider plants there is the indian pipe plant it looks like a pipe but it has a scales like it contains chlorophyll but there is no, it doesn't uh, undergo photosynthesis because it doesn't contain chlorophyll it looks like the par part which contains chlorophyll this plant is actually saprophytic and there are some flowers in which stamens are present but in the stamens there are no anthers so it is only a vestigial organ just for the sake of presence it is there but it does not undergo pollination what do you mean by connecting links now this question also is in the uh, we had discussed is connecting links means there are some organisms which may connect two types of animals or two types of phylums and which proves that we may have existed from 
the, the uh, particular uh, organism which it is talking about. So this connecting links example can be seen actually in uh, this uh, paleontological evidences where they found in the fossils that it was first fossil which was found deep inside the ground were for invertebrates. Then slowly, slowly the amphibians, the fishes, the reptiles, it came into being and then the mammals were found. So this type of fossilization proved that maybe there was a connecting link which proved that some animals may be connected to each other and this is how the generations passed on. Now what are homologous organs? Now homologous organs, where did we study? We studied that homologous organs uh, when we were studying the evidence, anatomical evidence for evolution. We studied that there are two types of organs, homologous and analogous. So homologous organs are generally the organs which are same in structure but their function is different. So same in structure but function different. That means it can be a human arm, a bull's leg or a bat wings. It is structure is same because they are made from the bony structure which forms the forelimbs. But in human beings we are using it differently, function is different. Then the bull's leg, it is used for walking. Then uh, bat's wings, it is also made from the same structure, that bony structure which is forming the bone forebrain, for uh, arm, not brain. And this, um, in, but in the function of the bat, it is used for flying. And whale's fin, whale, the huge whale, fin is also having the same structure, that is bony structure but fin is used for respiration purpose plus for navigating in the water. Analogous organ, now what are analogous organ? They are fundamentally different in their structure but functionally they are similar. So now they are different in the structure, structure is not same. Homologous structure is same, function is different. Here analogous function is same but structure is different. So here are tail fins of lobster and the tail fins of whale their function is same, just movement, but their structures are totally different. Now when one question which is very interesting is, give scientific reason why children resemble their parents. Now you are also children of your parents. You must be resembling either your father or either your mother or your grandparents or someone in the family. How do you resemble? Why don't you take all the characteristics but you resemble them? Now obviously when the mother and father are uh, having some different characteristics. When the child is formed, the passing over of the genes genetic character has taken place and that is called as inheritance. Due to heredity factors, we are having some characteristics of father, some characteristics of mother and therefore those characteristics which are seen, generally we say that yeah I look like him or I look like her and uh, physically or mentally maybe the intelligence thing or the behavior part also matches. This is due to just pure hereditary factors. Why is peripetus called a connecting link? Now peripetus is a very small animal which is actually showing some characteristics of annelida and some characteristics of arthropoda. Like arthropoda it has an open circulatory system, this also peripetus also has. Then annelida, it had uh, the appendages very small that also the peripetus have. So this was considered as a connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. During the course of evolution, giraffe has acquired long neck. Now acquired characters and inherited, inherited characters are different. Inherited characters which we get from our parents. But acquired characters means which we try to develop in our life. So it is said that giraffe, some years back, maybe centuries years back, giraffe did not have a very tall neck. But now what we see, giraffes have very, very tall neck. Now why it must be happening? Because now the one reason which we can decide, which we can come upon is vegetation has reduced quite a lot. Lot of cutting of woods and, um, and plants is taking place. So over the years, maybe the giraffe was not able to reach the plant to eat the green, like green parts. And therefore, it had to stretch the neck. This is the story behind it. So over the years, over generation to generation, it has uh, stretched its uh, neck 
to reach to the higher level of the plant and this is how the trait is acquired by generation to generation of giraffes. Now there are some definitions which are very important. I will just go through the definitions and tell you which definitions you should learn. First as I had told you about heredity, it is the transmission of mechanism of uh, physical and mental traits from parents to offspring. So this is heredity. Genotype and phenotype. Genotype is a genetic compos composition of an individual. Genetically what it is made up of. And phenotype is the appearance of a person or appearance of an organism. So genotype is a genetic matter and phenotype is the appearance. Monohybrid cross. When a cross involves only one pair of characteristics, only one pair when we consider when it is getting crossed, it is called as monohybrid cross. And dihybrid cross, when we consider two types of characteristics present in one plant or in an organism, and these two set of uh, characteristics are crossing over. That is called as dihybrid cross. Dominant trait. Dominant trait is the trait which is used or the term which is used for the genetic trait which can be expressed itself in its uh, in the presence of recessive character that means a individual has a dominant and a recessive character but the character or genetic character which can be seen is dominant character but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have recessive character it may have recessive character also which is not expressed and dominant characters are generally shown with the capital letters and recessive characters are shown with the small letters a diagram of DNA molecule was asked in March 2013. You have to show the diagram which is given on in, your, in your book also, double helix structure. You have to draw a spiral double helix structure with the nucleotides in between, the such type of lines are there. And one piece you have to show that it is called as gene. So that those lines are, uh, you can label it adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine. There are many times they ask this type of cell determination to be shown in the flowchart or they ask monohybrid cross to be shown in the form of flowchart or punit square. This is a very favorite question in board exam. What is a gene? Simple question, one mark question. What is a gene? A correct statement or correct definition is a fragment of a DNA that provides complete information about one protein. A fragment or a piece of DNA provides complete information of that one protein is called as one gene. And what is a chromosome? The chromosome is a single long thread of DNA which is present in an independent piece called as chromosome. So single long piece of DNA present in the one piece of chromosome. How many pairs of autosomes are present in human beings? There are 22 pairs of autosomes present in the human being. In which animal sex reversal is possible? Now when I was explaining, I had told that in some fishes and amphibians, instead the female carrying the XX chromosome, the male carries the XS chromosomes and female carries the XY chromosomes. This is called as reversals of sex or sex reversal. It is very seen in rarely in some fishes and amphibians and in some birds also it is seen. How does environment play a role in sex determination in some animals? Now in some animals the temperature at which the fertilized eggs are hatching that also determines the sex of the uh, next organism which is going to come. It is very rarely seen but it yes the temperature plays a very important role in determination of some of the organisms when they are hatching from their fertilized eggs. What is organic evolution? If you remember, I had written the whole definition. Organic evolution is the progressive developments of plants and animals. Progressive developments of plants and animals from their ancestors of different forms and functions. Name the plant that has lost chlorophyll and has become saprophytic. So uh, just for some questions back, I had told you there is a uh, plant called an Indian pipe plant which has lost the chlorophyll but it has the scales like chlorophyll but it is a saprophytic plant. What is the function of cecum and appendix in mammals? Now cecum and appendix as I said 
it was present in long back long generations back in the human beings because we used to eat or human beings used to eat raw food raw animals and raw plants and it was very necessary to di digest the cellulose and the raw meat and therefore the cecum and the appendix were important for digestion purpose which animals form a connective link between fish and amphibians and reptiles and mammals now between fish and amphibians you know amphibians are the animals which can live both in water and land but fishes can live only in water so there was one there were some organisms which were in between that means you can say it is a connecting link it is called as a lung fish thus fish lung fish was a fish or it is actually present which has both lungs and fins both it can uh, respire through and therefore it is a connecting link between fish and amphibians and between reptiles and mammals the platypus the duck build platypus it is uh, laying eggs like reptiles but have the mammary glands like mammals so it is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals which species can withstand heat waves now there are number uh, microorganisms actually can withstand the heat waves and which microorganisms can withstand bacteria bacteria is a species which can withstand any range of temperature it has the ability to withstand uh, any range of temperature it is found in the cold climate also in uh, arctic and antarctic also and it is found in the temporal region where the maximum heat is seen name the book written by darwin the darwin wrote a book named as origin of species and the origin of species it was written by charles darwin what is soft inheritance i had told you about lamarckism the jean baptist lamarck this he was a scientist who said that acquired traits also can be passed on from generation to generation and they he didn't call it as inheritance he called it as soft inheritance now we'll take some objective type of questions which come for one mark questions now some i am going to read out the sentences which might be true or false so you have to say whether true or false first one in sexual mode of reproduction greater diversities are generated yes in sexual mode of reproduction more varieties are seen more variations are seen more diversities are seen so this is a true statement why because there are two parents involved not one parent second the resemblances and differences are due to heredity yes heredity is a mechanism which transfers the uh, traits from parents to offspring and obviously the when the parents uh, characteristics is transferred to the offspring we will see some resemblance and some differences so this statement is also correct third one Mendel's work was not recognized until the turn of 20th century. Yes, Mendel in 1859 he uh, found out this, he experimented this, and for so many years no one accepted, and that's why this statement is also correct that he was not recognized until the 20th century. Fourth one, mother and father do not contribute equal quantity of genetic material to the child. This is a false statement. Why? Because as we had told. the equal amount of genetic matter is being transferred from mother and father it's not so that mother or father will give more and less they will transfer equal amount of genetic matter so this statement is false fifth one recessive character is the one which masks or hides its dominant character no dominant word itself shows that it is highlighted so recessive character cannot hide the dominant character in fact the dominant character hides the recessive character so this statement is false next one the pair factors do not segregate during the formation of gametes the pair factors this this is called as pair factor but during the formation of gamete it separates according to the statement it does not separate so it is a false statement it separates during the cell formation of gametes next statement Mendel concluded that white color of the flower was dominant over red. No, when we did the experiment, when we studied the experiment, we saw that the red color was dominant over white, not the vice versa. So this statement is also false. Next one, when F1 generation plants undergo self-pollination, they give rise to second filial generation. Now, 
this is a correct statement because we take the plants from the F1 generation and then self-pollination takes place among them. And this statement is correct. Next statement, each gamete takes two chromosomes from each pair and then when two such gametes combine, they restore the number of chromosomes. Now here in this diagram also you can see only one of the chromosomes is taken, not the both. So this statement is wrong. Only one gamete from one parent will be crossing over, not the two pairs. Next statement, mother's chromosomes decide the sex of the child. In case of human beings, this is false. Only the father's chromosome decide the sex of the child, not the mother's chromosome. Next statement, chance of the child being a male or female is 50%. This is correct. So either it can be XX or either it can be XY. So this chance is 50%, purely 50% chance as male carries one X and one Y and female carries both Xs. Invariably, female will give out X but in case of father, only either X or Y will come out, not both. Evolutionary changes are very rapid and random. Evolution has taken place generations and generations. Has it taken place in one year or two years? No. So we cannot call it rapid, we cannot call it random, it is slow. Next statement, organs which are functionally similar but fundamentally unlike are called homologous organs. This is a false statement. This functionally when they are similar, they are called as analogous, not homologous. Next statement, monkey and man have common ancestry. Yes, because many things we can see similar between monkey and man and we say that they are the forefathers or the ancestors of human beings. So this statement is correct. Lamarck's theory is universally accepted. No, Lamarckism is still not accepted. Only a theory has been proposed but this theory is not accepted as everyone is not convinced about it. Next statement, if X chromosomes is inherited from mother and Y chromosome is inherited from father, the offspring will be male. Correct. If X from mother, Y from father, it will be a male child. This is a straight, correct statement. Now, the uh, second set of uh, um, objective type of questions which I will be discussing is uh, fill in the blanks. Some fill in the blanks are given in a textbook. We will continue after that. First one. Minor differences occur in asexual reproduction due to inaccuracy occurring in dash. Now here in asexual reproduction hardly any changes are seen. If any changes are seen it is maybe during the DNA copying. So your answer to the blank is DNA copying. Next one, Mendel's experiments were based on a number of visible dash characters of pea plant. We can say dash characters means contrasting characters visible what we can see so if I see red and yellow flowers they are contrasting characters if I see round seed and wrinkle seed they are contrasting characters so the dash you will write it contrasting characters next one dash individuals contain both dominant and recessive genes which individual will have both type of genes capital and small so it will be heterozygous individual Hetero means different, homo means same. So when I say heterozygous, I am talking of two different characters, one dominant, one recessive. Next fill in the blank. In, a, in few organisms, the dash factors decide the sex. That means in human beings, you are not talking about in few organisms, the environmental factors play a very important role. As I said, there are some organisms in which the heat is also in, in playing a very important role or the environment in which the um, egg is formed and the egg is getting uh, fused with the ma male part and then it is uh, recognizing which type of uh, organism it will be whether male or female. So environmental factors play a very important role. Sex determination in human beings is dash. Sex determination is human being is purely genetical. That means if the genes are X and Y and X and X, the combination will give rise to girl or boy. So we can say the blank is in the blank purely genetical. 
dash pine cones corresponds to carpels of a flower. So uh, the the cones, the cones which are seen in pine trees, they are male and female. If I say ovulate type of cone, that means it is representing the female reproductive part of a flower. So ovulate type of pine cones is the answer. Dash are collected from different levels of depths. Fossils, now the answer is fossils. Fossils actually when we are digging, we find some imprints from remains of plants and animals which denote or which tells us about the organisms present some years back. As I said, when they were digging, this digging excavation is continuously going on. Many fossils are found and it was seen that invertebrates were the first fossils which were found, which proved that maybe the invertebrates came earlier than other organisms. So your answer is fossils. So these were the some of the few extra questions which I wanted to discuss with you so that the whole lesson get revised. In this lesson, most important part which you have to pay attention is how to write F1 generation, how to draw the flowchart of F1 generation, that means the monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross, F2 generation, P unit square is very important, which is always asked. Then there are some short notes like Darwin's theory. Then, then uh, the, what are the evidences which are uh, leading to the evolution theory? These are some important questions. Then what is heredity? What is inheritance? What is DNA? These are the examples of the questions which can, which can come for one mark, two mark, three mark questions. So go through all this. Diagram based questions are important because it's easier to draw and get the full marks. So go through the lessons and again and again see the video and, and you will get clear about your doubts.